been uh, pounding and crushing my brain working on an article for a photography magazine. Um, had to be exactly 2,000 words or less. So the only problem I ever have with the writing stuff is they end up being too long, never too short. I never have a problem with uh, producing enough material. It's always overproducing. Um, I had a conversation with my camera, and it actually spoke. Not really, but it was the same thing as if it was actually a two-footed camera. So I'm minding my own business, um, taking pictures of some birds. Yeah, I know. Some of you people out there don't like bird photography. A, a guy wandered up casually. He saw um, the lens that I had on my Fuji, which is the 50 to 140. Pretty large, not that huge. I thought he would interject himself, even though I had headphones in my ear, was listening to music. I was, I was taking pictures, which is what I like to do. And uh, he thought he'd ask me, uh, you know, in his mind anyway, an intelligent question. He said, what's the correct exposure for uh, shooting those birds? And uh, I didn't give him an odd look. He actually caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting to be bothered. And uh, I said, well, that depends. I said, there is no correct exposure. And then he shot me a crazy eyeball, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course, I could. he didn't say that, but I was reading his mind. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, there is no correct exposure. I said, right now I'm actually shooting shallow depth of field at f2.8. And he said, but there's a correct exposure for shooting these birds out in the bright sunlight. And I said, no, there's not. And then he shot me another crazy look. And he said, well, well sure there is. This is a true conversation. He was a tall, lanky guy. He seemed to be American. I didn't notice any accent. Because there's a lot of foreigners shot down here this time of the year. And I said, no, there isn't. I said, you know, it all depends, you know, on what it is you're trying to do. So you can either shoot the silhouette, shallow depth of field. Um, depends on what the effect you're going for. If it's birds on the wing, then you have to have a sufficient shutter speed. I still didn't impress him. Not that I was trying to impress him. And uh, I forget his exact words after that. But it was something to the effect of, well, there is an appropriate exposure. He said that that's, that was my question. So I actually threw him off balance by saying... And his answer to his first question, that uh, there is no correct exposure. And that's the point at which, you know, I had my headphones in, was listening to my music, and I was actually trying to do something on my vacation, of course. And uh, that's the point at which I got annoyed. However, I didn't express it. And I had to drop the hammer on his ass. Not literally, but figuratively. Figuratively, I dropped the hammer on his ass. Basically, you know, I let him know, you know, who's... Uh, you know, who's El Jefe, you know, <laughs> kind of like, uh, let's say, you know, when you walk up to somebody and it's like, get out of my way, and then you realize it's the mob boss, and it's like, ooh, man, I stepped on the wrong gray, you know, <laughs> I saw, I, yeah, I, in very short, I dropped the hammer on his ass, and that's when he felt embarrassed by asking me the question. I let him know that homie knows what's going on. Without being rude, by the way. Without being rude. I let him know that homie knows what's up. Uh, I, you could fill in the blanks there, okay? Um, but I'm actually glad that dumbass actually came up to me and asked me such a stupid question. Because it's as if I had a conversation with my camera. And it's the same thing that a lot of people do. Is that they pay attention to what the hell their camera says. You know, Even if you're shooting an aperture priority... You know, it's like, well, I'm going to shoot at f2.8, or I'm going to shoot whatever it is you're shooting at. Obviously, you need to be able to capture the action. Or not necessarily so. I mean, maybe you want some blurred action. Um, like a lot of the time, for effect, to show motion. Since the bird's body basically does not move very much in flight, only the wings, you might actually uh, throw in uh, some compensation so that you actually get some uh, blurred motion in the wings to actually demonstrate obviously people know that the birds are flapping its wings but to actually uh, to uh, present that to project that uh, motion in a still shot it's like well how do you present motion in a still shot it's like well you present the motion as it is uh, you know aesthetically fitting bird's eyes are perfectly in focus and so is the body but shutter speed just slow enough so that you can see the wings are a little bit blurred that's how you one example of how you would do it you know I've shot birds you know, I'm not really a bird shooter but it is relaxing you know um, it's not my favorite type of photography either but it is relaxing 
Um, shot birds in silhouette, you know. Hey, I know the bird's going to be completely blacked out, so I'm actually shooting in uh, matrix mode and letting uh, the camera stupidly, stupidly choose the incorrect uh, exposure because I know that the sky will be perfectly exposed, but the bird will be in silhouette. You know, if that's what I'm going for, that's perfectly appropriate. The point is, is that this guy was basically, and I had this epiphany driving home, you know, after having that short little conversation with that moron, that this is the exact sort of conversation I would have with a camera, if the camera could talk. Because the camera is always trying to express um, everything into gray sludge, you know. It's trying to express, express that middle gray. You know, you have a uh, reflectance meter built into your camera. It doesn't matter if you got it set for a spot or center or matrix. Your camera is always trying to express that, whether you're in shutter priority or aperture priority. Even if you're in manual. Even when you're in manual, your camera is constantly going... <coughs> you know, you need to raise this or you need to adjust that. And that's each and every time you need to be able to see the vision of what it is you want to make manifest and always give your camera the middle finger and say F you, you know. There is no correct exposure. It doesn't matter how expensive your camera is. It could be the cheapest Nikon or it could be a Nikon a D5 or a D500, the most expensive Canon. It doesn't matter what damn camera you got. Every one of them is a stupid piece of shit and has no idea what the hell a great image is. No idea. The only thing they're trying to do is to express to you a little hint like, you know, this is what I suggest to turn this picture into sludge. Here's the great secret of photography. And some people don't think about this, but everybody should know this. It's a big secret, but it shouldn't be a secret at all. Every camera on Earth wants to turn every image, no matter how much the dynamic range is. Your camera is really happy, shall we say happy, if uh, the dynamic range is uh, really narrow. It's like, wow, turning this into sludge is really easy. Um, Depends on where you actually throw the metering, whether it's center weighted metering or whether you can actually, there's some uh, algorithms that actually determine what the subject is and it will wait for the subject, wait the exposure. Not wait as in time, but actually wait the metering for the exposure of the subject. It doesn't matter. Your camera is trying to turn everything into sludge. Everything. If you say this is the priority, then that's what it'll turn into sludge. If you spot meter, then whatever you got the spot hovering over, whether it's 2 degree or 3 degree, that's what it wants to turn into sludge. You need to understand what it is you're exposing for. If you haven't figured out yet what your dynamic range in your scene is, not for your camera or through a light meter, but just by looking, it's like, you know, this, this is some serious dynamic range, or this does low dynamic range. You need to know what it is you're metering for. If you can figure that out, whether you're meeting for your shadows, well, that's going to cause, you know, some blowing highlights. Yeah, but as a dynamic range, that difference between my shadows and my speculars. Are you going to meter for your speculars? Well, that means everything in the mid-tones and the shadows, depending on the dynamic range, is going to be lost. But if you're doing rim lighting or silhouette lighting, then that's exactly what you want. Your camera is nothing but a stupid piece of shit. Excuse my language. It doesn't matter how expensive it is, your camera doesn't know one damn thing about what the hell a good picture is. Every camera tries to turn everything into middle gray sludge. That's its only purpose. Every damn camera has in it not an incident meter, no, a reflectance meter. Whether it's spot, center, or matrix, or average, as some cameras have, like the new Fujifilm X-T2 has four metering modes. It doesn't matter. All four of those metering modes are the same shit. Uh, Center-weighted sludge, spot-metered sludge, matrix sludge, <laughs> average sludge. Sludge is sludge, middle gray. Your camera has no idea what your exposure is. You need to determine with your vision, I, your skills or lack thereof need to be developed to determine what it is that you're exposing for. Your camera doesn't know a damn thing doesn't know anything. Okay, If you want to, and if the composition calls for it, however it rarely does, but sometimes it does. Sometimes flare is a good thing, and you want it. 
Sometimes blowing your highlights is a good thing. It often is not. That's the one thing that people find visually repulsive most of the time. Not always, but if it calls for blowing the highlights, fuck it, blow the highlights. Your camera doesn't know anything. As soon as you start taking control of your camera, okay, yeah, that's when the magic starts to happen. That guy was so funny. He gave me that crazy look, but I had to drop the hammer on his ass. And then he realized, ooh, I made a mistake. Because when I kept answers, like, there is no correct exposure. He's like, what? He didn't say that, but I could tell in his brain and his eyeballs, that's what his eyeballs were thinking. They're like, what? What do you mean there's no such thing as a correct exposure? It's like, there is no correct exposure. Well, sure there is. It was like I was having a conversation with a living camera. That guy was as stupid as my camera. Or your camera. Every camera is the same way. I think it's like, this is what it takes to turn this into sludge. Spot, center, matrix, doesn't matter. It's all sludge. You have to be smarter than your damn camera. And your camera is really, really stupid. I don't care how expensive it is. Your camera is freaking stupid. Okay, stupid. Understand that.